At Wednesday's Senate Judiciary Committee hearing, Senator Ted Cruz grilled Kelly Hodge, nominee to be United States District Judge for the Eastern District of Pennsylvania, on her beliefs regarding policing, citing an article she had written after the murder of George Floyd and her work in the Philadelphia DA's office, Cruz accused her of, quote, radical beliefs. Cruz has a history opposing President Biden's judicial nominees, claiming they hold views on criminal justice out of step with the American mainstream public. Democrats have countered that Cruz's antipathy is political grandstanding and that their bent towards restorative justice is much needed after decades of harsh and unequal treatment within the carceral system. I have been concerned for some time that this administration in making judicial nominations is not seeking out people who will fairly and impartially follow the law, but rather is systematically nominating people who are partisans, people whose views are sharply out of the mainstream, and people who are extreme. As I look at your record, I see considerable indicia uh, that you follow that same pattern. Is it true that you previously stated, quote, the root cause of the killing of black people in America is systematic racism? Thank you for the question, Senator. Um, I, to a, a colleague who just uh, asked a similar question moments ago, um, that statement was made in an article that I wrote following the killing of George Floyd, um, and I provided a what I would say is a revision to that, which is it's one of the root causes. Um, so, in, but the statement as written is what I did write. Well, you also described. Uh, possible solutions to what you described as, quote, the pandemic of racism, and you specified two in particular, eliminating qualified immunity, and, quote, reallocating police funding. Now, everyone in this committee hearing room knows that reallocating police funding uh, is a commonly used phrase that is also described as defunding the police or even abolishing the police. Uh, do you still think to use your phrase, reallocating police funding is a good idea? Senator, thank you for the question. Um, I believe that when I noted those particular, those two specific things um, in the article, that I was taking from what the dialogue was, particularly in this body, in terms of potentially revisions or considerations for how to address um, crime and instance of violence. And with that, um, I believe that all of those considerations are things that are left to the policy level, um, that that is not something that if I were so fortunate to be confirmed as a U.S. District Court judge that I would speak to or have any role in whatsoever, that that is something that is a policy consideration that is left to a body such as the legislative body. So, Ms. Hodge, I will say, I'm, I'll make a prediction for you, which is that the Democrats on this committee will give lots of speeches about how they don't support defunding the police. <clears throat> But in your nomination, I'm going to predict every single Democrat is going to vote to confirm you. And my, the basis for my prediction is every single Democrat has voted to confirm every single judicial nominee that's come from President Biden, no matter how radical. They keep voting for nominees who've advocated, as you have, abolishing or defunding the police, or as you phrased it, reallocating police funding, which is taking the money away from the police. Now, your successor, you were the interim district attorney in Philadelphia. Your successor, Larry Krasner, has, has become uh, quite infamous. He is one of the many George Soros prosecutors funded with massive amounts of money from Soros. And under his tenure, he has systematically refused to prosecute violent crime. He has released violent criminals. And we've seen in Philadelphia crime rates skyrocketing, murder rates skyrocketing, carjacking skyrocketing. Do you believe the policies of District Attorney Krasner have played a significant role in the escalating murder rates and crime rates in the city of Philadelphia? Thank you for the question, Senator. The crime rates in Philadelphia, as well as the crime rates across the country, um, are a sad and stark reality of the concerns that we all have regarding violent crime. Specific to your question, um, myself, having been the District Attorney of Philadelphia, having worked alongside and with law enforcement for a number of years, um, have the utmost respect and appreciation for the work that they do. 
And I also, when I served as district attorney. Okay, Ms. Hodge, oh, we have very limited time. So my question was, have the policies of Mr. Krasner contributed to the skyrocketing crime rates in Philadelphia? I believe that in order to address an issue as complex as crime in Philadelphia or any city in this country or any place in this country, that it involves a cross systems interaction between many individuals. Okay, and so Ms. I can't Hodger, speak are, are to, you willing to answer yes or no? I believe that I, I can't answer it yes or no because it's com I believe it's complex. So you, you also said in 2021, and this is a quote, you need to look at everything with a diversity lens. You need to take a moment to put on those glasses and look at every aspect from hiring to promotion to business development to marketing to strategy to front-facing clients to everything. You need to have that lens. How could a litigant in Pennsylvania have confidence uh, if they were appearing before you as a judge that they were would be treated fairly given your statement that everything has to be looked at from a racial lens. The, the Constitution is quite explicit protecting equal protection. What confidence would a litigant or a criminal defendant have when you publicly said everything needs to be looked at through that lens? Senator Cruz, if you don't mind, if you could repeat the statement or the quote again because that would be helpful sure. if you answer me answering the question. You need to look at everything with a diversity lens. You need to take a moment to put on those glasses and to look at every aspect from hiring to promotion to business development to marketing to strategy to front-facing clients to everything. And you need to have that lens. That was the quote. Senator Cruz, I don't recall the context within which I, I made that quote, so it's um, difficult for me for it to state whether or not it's regarding a matter or a case as opposed to um, a, another setting or environment where I may have made or, or provided that particular statement. Um, however, I will say that I believe that everyone, and I've done this for a number of years in my work specifically as a prosecutor, deserves equal protection under the law, upholding the law and following the law and applying it evenly. Um, and in doing so, I believe that if I were so fortunate to be confirmed that anyone who would come before me um, would know that I want to hear all of the facts and circumstances. I want to hear and listen to the complete argument of counsel and the parties and then apply the law to the facts and apply precedent in order to go ahead and render an appropriate decision. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Senator Cruz. Uh, without objection, I'm going to enter into the record an article written by Ms. Hodge entitled Race, Justice, and Equality, the mandate for change will require collaboration across systems. It's been referred to in pieces throughout 